It was the summer holidays after the end of my first year of university. Up until this point, my progress had been quick and I had been beating personal records almost on a weekly basis. I remember when I started, I'd look at professional jugglers and think why are they only practicing three times a week? If I was them, with their skill, I'd be doing it even more than I am now. However, now I understand why. My juggling had already started to change from smaller daily routines to longer but less frequent ones, but by now, progress was slow. I might not beat my previous record for weeks at a time. I knew I was still getting better, but it was taking a lot of effort for very little payoff. The routines began to get tiring. With lower numbers, boredom set in, and with higher numbers I got tired of picking 8 or 9 balls off the ground. And with that, I stopped trying to get better. I had more than surpassed my original goals. I saw my ability as a tall shard of a skyscraper amid smaller, neater ones built by other people. I decided to stop building higher and instead to polish off what I had. This was enough for me. Before when I was getting better and better, I held off making professional juggling videos. Why bother when you could do better the week after? Things had now changed. I didn't want to get more than about 50 catches with 7 balls on film. People would find it boring. A qualify with 8 was more than enough to show people that I could do it. I could do a nice long 5 ball routine with several tricks, perhaps some 3, 4 or even 5 ball 360s thrown in. Instead of getting better, I now wanted to make the most of what I had. Over the next year I made some videos that to this day I am very happy with. In 2010 I posted two of my favourites. In January I made an epic 6 minute long video of me juggling in all sorts of locations. It took forever to make and to edit. I colour corrected every clip and made it look as scenic as possible and it was relatively poorly received. People had to go at me for dropping. It went on for too long. It wasn't targeted at a particular audience and was viewed to be worse than the quick videos I had made previously, but I had done it for myself. I finally peaked in March that year. I had been training hard for two weeks in one final burst of training and within a single day I beat almost every record I had ever achieved. I filmed my two hour marathon session and to this day this is the best I have ever managed. I then stopped juggling and had no intention of carrying on. I'm told by people that it's a shame that I stopped, but I don't see why. I'm better than I ever intended to be. By not doing it, I haven't lost the juggling skill that I had slowly acquired. I became rusty, sure, but if I was to practice an hour a day for a week, I'd be back to coming close to, if not beating, my previous records. Most of the things I learn in life are left unfinished. I have dreams and aspirations about them that I never reach, or my interest in them fizzles out unspectacularly. With juggling, I progressed quickly and consistently because I had the motivation to do so, and ended with a hurried and frantic training session where I could happily say that it was the best I'd ever be. But I guess you know that wasn't really the end. I still juggle occasionally for fun, and during my 2012 holiday to the Lake District, I practiced every day to make what I believe to be the best video compromise I can achieve. It combines a high skill level with beautiful scenery. It helped settle my decision over which of the 2010 videos was best by making one that was the best of both, though it's marred slightly by interlacing artefacts. Although no longer practicing, I made the most of this juggling skill when I worked in McDonald's. I'd have a juggle off against Ronald McDonald every year. To this day, I haven't been beaten by him and it was lovely to see the smiles on children's faces as I performed throughout the year as an extra bit of my job that I did because I enjoyed doing it. I knew that most people weren't aware of how much effort went into it. For all they knew, every juggler could do the tricks that I was performing as they ate their Happy Meals. I still imagine them going to the circus and watching performers doing simpler tricks than I managed, and the sudden appreciation for that McDonald's juggler that they had seen so many years ago. Was it just their imagination? No. Would they see him again? No. Would they care? No. But once in a while, a child would watch me juggle and I'd know that they'd want to try it themselves. I could tell from that look in their eye, their genuine interest in seeing 6, 7 and 8 balls being juggled, and not just to see me fail, though there were those people as well. It was rewarding to think that I had inspired others to start, both in real life and online, just as Jason Garfield had done for me all those years ago. What's interesting is how my thoughts on juggling have changed. I used to live and breathe juggling. The idea of stopping was preposterous. I pictured myself still doing it when I was 60. I began thinking up scenarios where me juggling would save the world. Well, not quite that extreme, but you'll understand if you've ever been so excited about learning something. How times have changed. The almighty juggling DB site shut down. Anthony Gatto stopped uploading new videos. Now, months go by without me even thinking of juggling. Sometimes I even forget I can, though I know it's still in me, deep down. It's worth getting good at something. Before juggling, I couldn't really say that I had any hobbies, and certainly was unable to appreciate how enjoyable having one could be. I had tried other things, but couldn't keep them up. I thought it was just me, but juggling showed me that it was just that I hadn't found the right thing for me up until that point. But everybody has their natural limit, be it based on patience or fitness, and I felt that I had reached mine. Ossie Diablo, my secret nemesis throughout, achieved his 10 ball flash, something that I have never managed myself. Good for him. Checking his YouTube channel, it appears that he's still active now. He's clearly got a much higher natural limit for juggling than I have. 
Getting good at something doesn't just teach you the subject, but a lot about yourself and the different stages of learning things. Juggling has allowed me to become far more insightful into why people learn things and the reasons for giving them up. And who knows, maybe one day I'll be back with a vengeance and beat my previous records. Maybe that day is closer than you might think. Maybe I'm doing it now. Not just yet.